Shalom, this is Levi Shor. Welcome back to Sweet and Good Torah. We have Rabbi Mordecai Darwish of the Gates of Mordecai. We got an explosive one for you today. We're learning the Ram Chal, Das Tavuna, Knowing God's Plan. And we got a really exciting one today. The process of the revelation of God's oneness requires temporary the temporary existence of evil. Why is there evil in the world? We're about to find out. Why did God create evil? We're about to find out. So the uh, the sekel, the intellect, or the rabbi, as is translated, he starts he starts and explains. It's important for us to have a clear understanding of all the imperfections and evils that we find in the world, since they are not in accordance with God's infinite perfection, as we explained above. Since God is totally perfect. Surely he should not have created a world that he should have created a world that was totally good. It is this problem that has caused sinful people to fall victim to the various evil beliefs that we mentioned above. Now, with God's help, I will help you understand all these things properly. When we say that God is one, we mean that there is no other God, there, that there is no power opposed to him, and that nothing can hinder his will in contrast to the various false beliefs we mentioned above. If so, it's insufficient to find God's oneness through a positive description of what it is. Rather, we need to define it by negating anything that might contradict it. God's other attributes, though, cannot be defined at all by negating their opposites. Do you want an example, or uh, you want to comment on that? Uh, no, you can give an example. You can give an example. And let me give you an example. So he says, for example, in order to define wisdom, we would not say it is not stupidity. Rather, we need to define it in positive terms, such as the mind being full of true understanding of things. In defining, like, uh, Sidka, what's he said? Sidkus, Casidus. He says Casidus, uh, like, like saintliness. It is yeah. useful to speak of evil. It is useless to speak of evil. Rather, its definition is to be kind to all. That's Casidus, to be kind to everybody. Right. However, so these attributes, these attributes, like like you can't speak of its opposite or negate its opposite and get what it is. Right. It's you don't really so understand. With... Right. You don't really understand from the opposite. So, right. however, in defining as oneness, it is necessary to use negative terminology that there is no other God. Thus, in order to define any of God's other attributes, we need to express them positively in terms of what these good qualities are whereas the definition of his oneness is expressed by the negation of evil. Right, that's why in Kabbalah times you, you, you say ain't so, like a negation of end, right? So we, it, what the Ramah is saying is that it, when you negate evil, which is the only quote-unquote opposing force, then you reveal his oneness. And, and we see it. I mean, we see it clearly. Like, it's so hard because there's evil in the world, that's how it leads people to doubt, you know, does God exist, Chas Vashalem? And, and, and that's why we see the mitzvah of, you know, the we need to erase Amalek. When you have Nazis in the world, Yamak Shemam, or neo-Nazis in the world, when you see people doing evil, we have these evil terrorist attacks. Like, you know, it takes away from God's oneness. It takes away from that, you know. Yeah, it's not just, not just the evil, like, actual evil, but like, any anything that uh, you know that could be um, negation of it, like eating non kosher food, right? That's evil. Now, you may not think it's evil, but it is, right? Speaking uh, slander, right? That's evil. You know, all, uh, the the evil is is unbound by just like tragedies and and massacres, right? It's it's it's, it's a little bit more than that. It's a little bit more in depth. Oh, right now it can just be like the little evil, just like being speaking badly about someone, right? And that takes right. away, that takes away from this oneness. It takes away from the oneness of Hashem, of God. So from what I've said, you can see that had God wanted to reveal any other attributes of his perfection, there would have been no need to create evil. This is because they are all totally good attributes. It can only be defined by formulating their goodness. Since, however, God wanted to reveal his absolute oneness, which can only be defined by negating evil, it was necessary to create evil and then to show that it has no independent existence or power whatsoever. Only in this way 
is every aspect of God's absolute oneness clearly revealed. Right, yeah. So God creates the evil to kind of give the impression of the other side. And then once he totally knocks it out, then he shows that there is only one power in existence. And that's really the whole point of history is to show that there's only one power in existence. Yeah. Right? But it, like to give like a simple example, like you have a little bully on the playground. And this big kid, and he's not being very nice. And then he picks on this little kid, this little weak kid. And everyone knows when the bully is like picking on that little weak kid, it's not right. Like, this is not right. It's not good. And then, you know, some like, let's say some champion comes, stands up to the bully, you know, and, and, and beats up the bully. And then people can feel that something good just happened, like protecting, you know, this person that needed protection. Well, okay. You can feel it. I mean, you can feel it when, when you see good triumph over evil. You can feel a change. Like you, you see the world how it's supposed to be. You see tzedek, see justice, you know, real justice, real mishpat, you know. All right, so let's see how we go on. So do not make the mistake of thinking that wisdom can only be understood by first showing what ignorance is. And chasidu, saintliness, can only be understood by showing what cruelty is. Based on the premise that something can only be defined through its opposite. You must understand that all the perfect attributes can only be understood through descriptions of their actual perfection, the negation of their opposites, such as ignorance and cruelty, does not help us to define what they are. Rather, the negation of the opposite of all these perfect attributes only serves to define the attributes of a God's absolute oneness. This is because God's oneness is defined by negating anything that contradicts it i.e., example, anything evil and negative. Therefore, we can only understand all of God's other perfect attributes as subcategories of God's oneness. A person who wishes to gain a proper understanding of these matters must not confuse one category with another. Yeah, like you don't understand uh, what good is in, in people, like good, like a nice, a nice, gentle person by, by wiping out all the cruel, evil people. Right. That doesn't that doesn't show you what a good person is by wiping out the other side. But by wiping out any other power, you, by definition, reveal the one. Yeah. And if you if you if you if you wipe out all the stupid people, that doesn't show you what wisdom is. Right. Like yeah. any other attribute in the world, you wipe out the other side then the negation of it, 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 it doesn't reveal what it is except for the oneness of God. When you negate the other side of that, any other power, you, you nullify everything, then you reveal that there's only one true power sustaining everything. Yeah. It's a deep concept. It's a very deep concept. No, it's very it's very deep. It's very interesting. Right. It's very interesting. Here, let's, so we're going to go on. So now this is what the neshama, the soul says, or the student. So he says, what do you say is very true? Understanding depends entirely on a proper classification of things. We must identify all the different general categories and then place each thing in the category it belongs. Only in this way can we understand the true nature of each thing and the effects it has. Even though God's ways are totally different from our ways and beyond any such classification, we need to conceptualize things on our limited human level. Yeah, everything is, that we're talking about, we're talking about from our, our perspective, our level. Right, you can't assume and start talking from his high and lofty level, mm. right? Because he created the whole world for us, for us to realize something. So we're just going to use, you know, human terms and stuff that we can understand. Yeah, no, but for sure, I mean, the ins the the existence of evil in the world, and then even worse when people see that, you know, like evil people, you know, like they're successful. It it, it right, it takes away it it takes away from like the the truth. I look at Shem's because, absolute because, unity. Because then you, th you could think like you could think like, oh well, if I um, cheat people, then I'll prosper. Yeah, constantly. right. And if I beat them up and take their property, then I can win. You know, and yeah. and like you, you think you could do evil and 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 enjoy yourself, right? Yeah. And this, this extends beyond other things. You think I could speak slander about people, and then you know I can uh, form alliances and do conspiracies yeah. against people and yeah. that kind of stuff. No, and, that, and that's why Tzedek and Mishpat are so important. When people see that evil does not prosper, but yet it's punished, 
then you have justice. Then people say, ah, that, that, that person did something bad. They deserve to be punished. And then justice is restored to the world. You know, it's like, you know, if everyone was, you know, if everyone was treating each other kindly, you know, we'd be in the Garden of Eden. We'd be back in Gan Eden. But unfortunately, when people are doing bad in the world, right, there has to be, you know, some kind of response to it. It's it just, it can't stand. Right, so the rabbi goes on, he says, there's much more to it than what you have said. Let me explain. It is obviously true that God could have created the world using the full force of his infinite essence. Then we would not have been able to see any structure, pattern, or development, or cause and effect within the creative process. Had he created the world in this way, we would be unable to say anything at all about his actions. It would be totally impossible for us to understand such a process. Since anything done using the full force of his infinite essence is totally beyond the grasp of our limited and finite minds. However, God wanted us to be able to understand something about what he does and how he does it. In fact, he wants us to put for he wants to put us to put effort into attaining this knowledge and to pursue it greatly. Therefore, he chose to create the world in such a way that his actions could be analyzed and understood by the human mind. The general principle here is that God wanted to limit his actions so that they would be according to the level of his creations and not according to his own exalted level. This gives us the ability to analyze his actions and understand at least something, if not a lot. Yeah, so the world's created in seven days. That's why, you know, there's months, there's years, there's time frames, all that stuff. And uh, the level of development, you know, a kid grows up, he's not just born and ready. And, and the whole world is not just disappears on the scene. Right. It had, had it been, it would have been God said, and it was. That's it. And and the end. Right. But we, <laughs> that's not how it works. Right. That's why we start at the beginning and the seven mm -hmm. days of creation. There's Adam and Eve. There's a snake. And it's going on further, further, further. Right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, otherwise, then you, we wouldn't be able to understand stuff. So we need to see steps. We need to see levels. That's the only way humans can can grasp things. Yeah. When they just like show up on the scene, then you can't. You can't really grasp well, well, how did this happen because yeah. we're limited. Now, I was learning something interesting over Shabbos. I was learning the Arizal, Rabbi Yitzhak Loria, his Sefer Eitz Hayim, the book, uh, The Tree of Life. And he was saying, right, you're saying before the Ein Sof, right? The Ein Sof is infinite. There's no limit. There, there's no boundaries. There's no nothing. So Hashem created, you know, the 10. He brought everything into existence through the 10 sayings, the Eser Mamaros, and he created the 10 Sephiros. So that's going to be 10 aspects of how Hashem is interacting with us. But they're limited. They're only in a certain way. So like, for instance, like when Hashem acts through chesed, through love and kindness, like he'll bring a gentle spring rain and everything's beautiful and everything's growing. And we see the love and the kindness of how Hashem's interacting with us. Or if Hashem's acting through gavora, through like din, judgment, like Hashem can bring a, a huge hurricane on the world and we see the damage and destruction. And Hashem's unfortunately is acting in that aspect of judgment. And we can see through these different ways that Hashem's like limiting himself into a finite role, and then we can understand it. Like, that's what the Ram Khan is saying. We can understand for each one of these actions, you know, like what's ha what's happening. All right, so we'll go on. So the creation of the world as described in the book of Breshis of Genesis proves what I've been saying. There God tells us that he made the world step by step. I think you've read this before. Through different divine <laughs> utterances, right? Through the Esther, the Esther Mamaros, the 10 sayings, according to the pattern he wanted. He did not create it in one instant and with one mamaros, one utterance, although he certainly could have done so had he wanted to. As a result, we can identify the different categories of God's actions upon the world and put each action into its proper category and analyze its details. We are able to classify the reasons behind God's actions and all the more so what they actually bring about. All this follows a pattern similar to what we find in the human realm. Right. So, you know, like we're not just humans. We have like different aspects of us, right? Like we have our brain, we have our heart, we have our liver, we have bones, we have uh, sinews, we have skin, we have flesh, we have nails, we have all, all, all these uh, things that... Here, let, me, um, let, me pause, let me pause this for one moment. I'll be right back. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> right, let, let me read the next part. Okay, so let us return to our topic. 
We've already explained that God's oneness is defined by negating anything that contradicts it. For example, anything evil and negative. Therefore, we have one common principle when we consider any of God's infinite attributes of perfection. Concerning each of these infinite attributes, we must always understand that only he has this perfect attribute and that there's no force that can oppose or hinder this attribute. All of this part of the definition of God's oneness, as I explained. So two points follow from what we have said. A, as we explained above, in order to reveal any of God's attributes apart from his oneness, there would have been absolutely no need to create anything that was imperfect and evil. Only in order to reveal his perfect oneness and to clarify all its details clearly and properly did this become necessary. B, all the other attributes of God's perfection, his wisdom, his compassion, etc., are subcategories of the attribute of his perfect oneness. This attribute oversees all the other attributes, as we proved above. In every aspect of his infinite perfection, he is completely and utterly one. Only he has this perfection, and there's nothing that can oppose or hinder his perfection, as we explained. This reality is rooted in the fact that God must absolutely exist, i.e., example, it's impossible that he should not exist. That fact determines what we are able to express about his perfection and what we are unable to express. We can only express that his is the only imperative existence. Only he must absolutely exist and nothing else. This is clear to all those who have true amuna, true faith. You will soon, you will see soon how much we will gain from what I've explained to you. Yeah, everything else in existence needs an energy source, right? Our cars need gas. Our homes need electricity. Um, you know, our bodies need food, water, right? Everything we need oxygen. Everything in the world is dependent on something else in the world. Yeah. Right. But only God's existence is imperative. It's not. It's not relying on anything else. He is the energy source of everything. This is a great concept that everybody has to realize. I mean, all humanity will realize it in the end. But that's that's the central theme of all history is realizing that there's only one true central power source of all of existence. There are no other gods. There are no split powers. There are no, uh, you know, anything else. Angels, higher forces, Satan himself, right? All these things, they are nothing in comparison to God. They're only there for illusions so we can understand the one true power source. Yeah. No, it's right. It's like since Hashem is the one source of everything, he's keeping the existence. He's keeping all the universe in existence. So if Hashem weren't, wasn't there, there would be no universe. But, but, but a person, no matter how great, even like the greatest people in all of history, when they're nifter, when they die, the world goes on. The world can go on without even the greatest of, of, of human beings. But the universe can't exist without it, you know, without God. Without God, there's no, there's no universe. You know, it's only Him keeping it in existence, every every moment. All right, so then we we'll go on. So it says now you can understand what I was really telling you before. The fundamental difference between the attribute of God's oneness and all His other perfect attributes, only the revelation of His oneness requires the existence of imperfection and evil, as well as perfection and good. This in turn creates the arena for serving God and receiving reward. Had God wanted to reveal any other attributes of his perfection, he would have created anything in a state of total perfection according to whatever particular aspects of perfection he desired to reveal. There would have been absolutely no need to create any element of imperfection whatsoever. This is because the revelation of any of God's attributes apart from his oneness in no way requires the existence of imperfection. As we have explained, without a world of imperfection, there would be no arena for man's task of serving God and no possibility for him to receive reward. Only when he chose to reveal the element of his perfect oneness did this require the existence of an imperfect world. This is because his oneness can only be revealed through the negation of imperfection. Okay, this is this is a very deep concept, and if people can <laughs> grasp it, they can understand the whole purpose yeah. of being religious, quote unquote, yeah. is that it's not just oh do X Y Z and you'll get rewarded, and if you don't do X Y Z, you'll get punished, right? It's by doing X Y Z you are 
negating evil and um you know uh, promoting oneness in the world that through your actions through your thoughts through your words and all these things and 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 you're actually having an effect in reality in a human consciousness in the world of the revelation of the oneness like you're the what what we were commanded has a, a a direct link into this process and and so we're not just doing any arbitrary things and getting rewarded for them it's not like a person goes out and gets money for working and it doesn't matter what it, what they do whether they're a teacher or a lawyer a doctor football player right it's the same money right no for here it's like it's like everything you everything you're commanded has something in reality that it's repairing and and so that's why god created the world with lack and 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 imperfection so to leave it up to the human to come and perfect his world by by doing these commandments and revealing his greatness yeah no it really it really clarifies where we are in history right now like it seems very very confusing you know, we have this this building momentum to this, quote unquote, this like new world order where they want this like world government of like atheism, basically. Like they want to deny God's existence. And, you know, when we see like the the ultimate expression of like scientific technology, military capability. So we see the world, we see mankind at its most powerful, but yet we're going to see that all these forces that are standing against the revelation of the one infinite beings, you know, you know, revelation in the world, they can't stop it. Even with the most advanced, you know, military technology, even with all their surveillance, you know, all the, you know, all the, you know, things they're filtering through the media and the movies and the music. And Hashem's going to show that none of it can stop it. When Hashem wants to reveal, you know, himself in the world, nothing will stop it. So it's like the ultimate expression of that that's going on, right? So it seems very confusing right now. Like, why, why are all these bad, corrupt people? Why are they all well, rising to the top? Why are they, you know, you know? Right. It's confusing to people who, yeah. to the uninitiated, the people who don't yeah. know the God's plan, right? That's why yeah. I call the book yeah. "Knowing yeah. God's Plan." Yeah. Right. Once you know the God's plan, you know exactly what's happening. No why problem. Doing it? So you're not phased <laughs> by it. You just keep on yeah. trucking. Yeah. Like, oh, I got to keep. I got to keep doing the commandments. Got to keep doing the commandments. Right. This is all part of the plan. Right. So what? Right. So what we do is we do our job. We're learning Torah. We're doing the mitzvos, and we're doing gemilas chasadim. We're doing acts of kindness. Right. Every time we're nice to another person, every time we do a mitzvah in the world, you know, every time we're learning Torah, where the, all of them are like a light. It's like a. It's called like you know ner mitzvah Torah or each mitzvah is a little candle, a little light, and the Torah itself is a great light. And we're lighting more and more candles, and as we light more and more candles. The darkness of evil is starting to go, you know, it's start, it will more, eventually more start to is revealed. Yeah, exactly. more, more the right. oneness of yeah. the revealed. That's yeah. the plan to reveal his oneness. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, can we break it down anymore? Or should everyone just sit back and think about it? It's very deep. I mean, it's a very big concept. But when yeah, you understand people it, people yeah. don't understand this, then there's no point in, in you know going further because you'll you'll never understand what Judaism is trying to do. Because you're always like you always have these these people who are always you know they scrutinize the commandments or they scrutinize God's actions or they scrutinize people they scrutinize, they're always scrutinizing right because they're they're viewing it without a plan in mind right they don't see the whole blueprint of creation and and understand what God is trying to do trying to manifest and so so like all their scrutiny is is really futile it's stupid it's 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 without knowledge they think they're they're quick. Right. They think they're they picked up on a mistake. They picked up on some kind of lack. And really, like it, it, because they don't know the grand theme and the grand plan, like they make stupid statements. So anytime you hear a stupid statement, like a, a statement against God, against the Torah, against uh, being religious and all that stuff, they're, they're really unintelligent statements viewing the, the any aspect of the Torah, any detail you know, in, in a limited scope. And, and trying to to you know use logic which is faulty logic um to to come to a conclusion and so like anybody who poo poos it is 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 in the wrong you know if they want to really sit down and and and, and speak about it intelligently if they want to just like fight you know they're gonna oh yeah who says you're right who's that? that's that's right. that's not intelligence right no so when you know the plan right evil wasn't created 
you know, so class of Shalom people would be evil. Evil's only created to be destroyed. Like it's only, it's only going to be temporary in the total right. history of the world. Like right now we've been doing thousands of years. It seems like right. Evil's like, you know, in a big uptick right now, but it's at its fight. It's we're at the end. It's really about to be completely defeated forever. We're getting closer and closer to the evil's end. And it's really showing us it's just a, it's the sparring partner. It's to motivate us. It's to get us to fight harder and better to ultimately defeat it. The, the, the purpose of evil it's not that evil should rule. It's only to be defeated, and it's not going to be here forever. You know? Well, it's to be to be uh, defeated by keeping the commandments and yeah. revealing God's oneness, and that's how that's how it's defeated right. by the revelation of the oneness. It's not defeated by going out and you know doing marches and uh, you know <laughs> fighting and get, picking up arms and <laughs> doing like you know all, all, all the crazy stuff that people the physical um, you know. Uh, corporal things that people do nowadays because they think that's the only way yeah. we have a direct line of direct um you know uh, connection with the source and we just have to like tap into that source once you tap into that source he does everything for you and it manifests in the physical anyway so there's no point in trying to manipulate the physical you know what i mean as as what you see happening before your eyes yeah no, and it's right. And, and defeating evil, it's simpler in some ways than people think. It's as simple as like just doing the mitzvah of saying the Shema, like in the morning, in the afternoon, like lighting the Shabbos candles, you know, having, you know, the, the, the coast of wine, you know, doing the cup of wine for Kiddush on Shabbos. Anything you do, like, it, just, you're saying blessing. Just being, just, being nice, just being nice to other people. And then a huge thing, tzedakah, giving charity to the poor, people that need help, giving someone help. All these mitzvahs, they they like make the world a brighter place, and we get closer and closer to right the revelation of Hashem's oneness and the defeating of evil. Uh, you want to wrap it up? You got any? Uh... That's it. The greatest thing, the greatest thing you could do is spread the knowledge, right? Because as GI Joe said, knowing is half the battle. <laughs> and knowing is half the battle. Subscribe, like, and share, baby. That's the. Right, help us doing. out. Get the message out there get because the guess out. what? When you know God's plan. Life gets a lot easier. When you know the rule book, when you know the blueprint, everything gets a lot easier. Exactly. Right, so we, we hope to see you all back again soon on Sweet and Good Torah and the Gates of Mordecai. All the best.